I'm a little bit the, the uh, black sheep of, of speakers tonight. Um, we have seen some brilliant technical presentations tonight. Um, I will focus a little bit more on the business side of things, but I'm pretty sure you will be able to relate to it. Um, my name is Felix Schröder. I'm uh, in the data analytics space since the last 10 years. Um, today I'm speaking to you as representative of the Gründer Allianz Ruhr in Germany, so the Founders Allianz Ruhr area in Germany. So the uh, Gründer Allianz is actually an initiative by 70 uh, big and medium-sized corporates in uh, Germany that want to promote their region more for startups um, and innovation. Um, those 70 companies have very well understood that startups are actually a catalyst for data driven innovation. And today I will talk about their uh, newest program that we are currently launching, that is our uh, data program. So, what we want to achieve by it, we want to better bring together corporate partners and startups. So the corporate partners are more focused of the more in focus of the specific area in Germany that I'm talking about. But we are looking for startups moving around the globe, and that is also the reason why I'm here and why my colleagues visit India, North America, and uh, all kinds of countries in Europe. Um, so how it works in detail and what there is maybe new for you as a startup, I will tell you a little bit later. Um, let us maybe start with why we actually want to uh, create the data. So when we are talking to um, data innovation startups or data science startups, um, all of them facing the same challenges. So um, they have to make sure their product matches the market. You know, it's very nice to build a, a technology demo, what you can do, but you actually have to sell a product. Again. So it's important that this really matches the market and somebody is willing to pay money for it. Um, second, um, if you want to train your models, you need High quality data and you need high quality data not of, of the last two weeks, you need quality data for a couple of years to make it work. Um, so, uh, where is this data coming from when your company is just like two months old? Right? Um, and the third thing, uh, money, right? Cash flow, especially if you're dealing with the business to business area. Can take six months, 12 months until you find the, your first client that is willing to pay for your MVP. Um, this is definitely a challenge to um, startups, especially in the data science space. Um, but there's another side to the coin, right? Not only startups struggle in the data innovation space, also uh, corporates struggle. Um, they also face challenges. So, for example, they are very uh, they, they address the problems usually from a very techn technical uh, point of view. So they go to one of the big vendors and uh, look for a data science software that they have on shelf, and they buy it and introduce it to their company, and then they think they're doing, doing data innovation. Of course not, this doesn't work, right? So, um, second, uh, many com companies are also not having a good data strategy. Yeah? Where do I want to go from here, from today, in the future with my data, in two years, in maybe five years? And third, um, and this is actually probably my favorite, um, what's the return on investment of my data science team? Now, I've, I've seen this a couple of times in uh, corporates. They um, hire uh, three data scientists, put them into a room, tell them to do data science, um, and after six months they complain that the return on investment of the team is really bad. Um, but at the same time, there's no clear vision where this company actually wants to go with the data scientists. And um, at the same time, um, the, the data scientists have no authority to change processes, data flows, for example, within the corporation. Um, so they get the data they actually need to run their analytics. So um, here the question is not so much on the on the skills of the data scientists. They are usually pretty good. Here's more the question is like, where do you want to go with my team? So, when we are looking at those three challenges of corporates, and we are looking at the three challenges of, um, of startups, we also have the feeling that there's some kind of match here. We have very uh, skilled, motivated people in startups. At the same time, we have um, corporates with a lot of data history. Why, why we should not bring them better together, right? And um, our idea is we want to build a data. The data to collect unique data assets, connect, Startups and corporate partners together with experts, 
and also enable and encourage partnership between those uh, players in the long term. Not only for one single project, but really for the long term, for a long term partnership. So, um, why do we want to go to the Ruhr region in Germany, right? Ruhr region in Germany is like in the west part, yeah, it's not so much on the international startup map as Berlin, for example, or Munich. Um, but it has the longest history of industrialization in Germany, right? Uh, and we see a huge potential in this area. Um, it's highly populated. You find here five million people living. Uh, this is basically Berlin and Munich combined. Um, so what you see here, especially uh, an opportunity for is industry data. So it's um, this area is famous for mining, traditionally, steel production, mining. This all already came to an end in, over the last decade, I would say. Um, but still, the corporates, many corporates are around, and they're sitting on the history of data of easily 20, 30 years sometimes. Um, this industry, industry data is mostly untapped from a data science perspective, so we see their huge potential if the startup is dealing in that area. At the same time, because of the, the because of its history of coal mining and uh, steel production, companies are very closely connected to each other. So your chances, if you get in one client uh, for your product in this uh, in this network, the chances are pretty good that you can sell it to some other companies there as well. So just to name a few, maybe those names will not tell you anything. This is pretty fine, but they're uh, kind of popular, not too small in, uh, in Germany. Uh, I guess very famous one, this where Boko, of course, also in Gucci, one of them, maybe heard of. Yeah, that I knew is very Germany usually recognized. Um, okay, now to the interesting part. What is in there for you if you are a star? Um, we just launched our first open core with uh, a bunch of data challenges you can apply for as a sub. So what is happening on our webpage, you find uh, real-world business problems, business uh, potentials from our uh, corporate partners. Um, they come together with unique data sets. You can apply to those challenges. Um, and of course, if uh, this partnership uh, runs well and uh, everybody is happy, you have very good chances to uh, create your new client, a new partner, maybe a new investor for you. And, uh, oh, oh yeah, I forgot something that's also budget connected to every uh, single challenge, uh, usually around uh, 25 euros. So, um, you find all of those challenges on our webpage, data.google. Uh, currently, you find in our first open, in our first open call, seven challenges that are really focused on uh, data science programs. Uh, please have a look. Uh, I will now introduce you to, um, to uh, three, if I can turn to three of those challenges um, to give you an impression on what what it's all about. So, uh, relatively easy to understand. I think it's so easy to solve. This one uh, from one of our partners in the rural region, uh, this is here in the water business actually. So, what they have is they have a couple of thousand sensors in the lakes and canals around the rural area uh, collecting information about water level, water speed, so they control, they can accordingly control their water pumps later in the process. This is really critical for them to understand uh, like, and also predict um, how water level will um, develop over the last over the next couple of hours. So um, for their own prediction models, they need high quality data. But those sensors are, of course, outside, so they get dirty, um, they, they break, uh, sometimes, sometimes there's a connection problem, um, or even some vandalism happening. So what they're actually having is a team of specialists that are mainly focused on fixing the sensor data on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, identifying problems, saying, okay, uh, somebody should drive out in, into the field, uh, checking this and that sensor, because the numbers look kind of strange. Um, but it's fixing this data for their own models is a little bit more challenging than just taking the average over the uh, over the start and end point that seems good, right? Uh, there's there's a lot of experience connected to this, so this could be a very interesting data science case to replicate this experience, this knowledge that those experts have uh, with the data with the model. <clears throat> 
Uh, another case, this is actually my, my favorite, uh, is about ground depression. Um, so, uh, as I mentioned before, the Ruhr area uh, has a long history of mining. So, they, they did um, uh, 1,200 1, meters or something like this. And um, it has a lot, a lot of mining was happening in this area. What means if there's a major structural pro problem in the ground because of this mining, and this can generate problems maybe 20 years later, 15 years later, um, causing actually holes collapsing, uh, yeah, collapsing on the surface uh, is really an issue and can be a danger in the future. So what's considered an early indicator of the structural programs in the ground that can affect the surface are actually small ground depressions. Um, can be two meters wide, 80 centimeters uh, deep, but um, they are hard to find, right? We have data, our partner has data, um, uh, RGB data as well as like 3D, uh, 3D, 3D data of this area. Um, but finding those depressions is currently a manual, it's manual work. And this is very um, inefficient. And we are looking for somebody who comes up with, a, with an algorithm to, to improve the situation, to automate this. What you can automate, what is well, very well automated is already if you, for example, uh, have a new small ground depression, right? You fly over, you fly with cameras over your uh, area, and from one year to another you have a small depression. This can be identified pretty easily. This is not the challenge. The challenge is how do, can I do it when I have uh, no history? Of this, like right? flying over the area for the very first time. Personally, it reminds me a little bit maybe of um, Italian uh, cancer and x ray pictures, but um, seems to be a little bit similar, but um, this is up to you how you can address such a problem. Another case um, natural gas price prediction. Um, there's a, 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 a European exchange basically of, uh, of gas. Um, but, uh, it's not so much, in this, this case is not so much meant to predict the gas price in the long run, more on a day-to-day -day basis, like even, even intraday. So what is influences gas price? Okay, that's the obvious one, right? Weather, okay, easy. Um, electric power plants seems to influence the, the gas price, actually. In the past it was oil, um, but this is not the case anymore. So uh, electrical power seems to be a better indicator. Um, also, Oh, two emissions. Uh, you have, if you want to burn gas, you have to buy uh, CO2 emission certificates. Um, <clears throat> to neutralize that, also their prices uh, influence the gas price. Uh, and also, what we have also data on plant maintenance uh, in the gas fields of uh, Norway, and to basically get, can get the information of, okay, in two weeks we'll have the massive maintenance, so for a couple of hours, and then you know, gas going through the pipes, what means this might influence the gas price. Um, this are just a couple of ideas we have and came up with um, the factors that might influence this price, but your model is also free to, to use other ones that you can, can come up with. So there were three of the examples, <coughs> three examples of the challenges that we have on our web page. Um, let me tell you a bit about the process actually here. Um, we are not an open data uh, platform. We don't want uh, to be a web page where everybody can upload this data and without any idea what's behind it, what it can be useful for, and just waiting for anybody to pick it up and do something with it. From our experience so far, is, um, that those platforms are not working so well. What we want to do is that our partners um, provide the data assets as well as bring a specific use case um, um, with this data, actually, and uh, those seven use cases right now we come from the web page. Um, where we are also separate a little bit is from uh, running data challenges in the way of, for example, Kaggle does it. Um, I really like those Kaggle challenges. I participated myself in a couple of them. Um, I really love them, but there's usually more the winner takes it all, right? A lot of people, a lot of startups invest a lot of time into this, and basically uh, you get something out of this if you, if you make it on the top three or so. So um, in our process, uh, selection will take place before you start working on it. 
projects. So you can uh, use all your resources, all your focus on this uh, specific problem because you're the only one working on this specific problem. So it brings me also to the timeline. Um, we, uh, our application phase uh, was running in September and it's also still running in October. Um, our deadline is still 31st of October. Then will be about like uh, 10 days um, selection process of the specific um, um, startups together with the partner that's actually providing this data. Um, and then you will work for around three months, depending on the case, complexity of the case, um, on the specific use case. And then we will think about long-term cooperation, depending on the outcome of this. Um, who should apply? Who's, which startups are we looking for? Again, uh, we're looking for startups globally. Um, you should be a startup in the, in the data science field, that would be for sure beneficial. Um, one hard fact is we, we want to have you a, a, a legal entity for uh, over six months. So it means like um, if you're a couple of students that have an idea, this is maybe not the, the right program for you, maybe you do something else. Um, so we want to have the legal established company. And of course, um, when you sign up to one of those challenges, please send us your application, um, containing your technical approach that you would try on the, on the problem, mm -hmm. as well as your ideas, uh, references from projects you have maybe already done. Um, this is very beneficial if you want to be selected for this case. <clears throat> Again, uh, deadline is 31st of October. Uh, maybe uh, you look at our webpage at those seven challenges and say, okay, um, I'm in the data science field and I have some experience there, but maybe there's no use case right now that um, is really fitting me. Uh, then please at least sign up to our uh, newsletter because, as I mentioned before, this is our first open call with the first seven challenges. Um, the next open call we are already planning, probably beginning of next year, maybe the end of this year. Uh, we will run the next open call with new challenges, new partners, so the probability is high that maybe then uh, there is a challenge for you as well. So if you want to get notified, please sign up to our newsletter. Or if you know another um, startup maybe that you are aware of that we don't know that could be interested in one of our challenges, um, please notify them, let them know um, maybe this is a good match. So uh, again, uh, this is our webpage, then have those more. Um, thanks for your attention, and uh, I hope I receive a lot of uh, signups and applications from Thank you. Thank you, Felix. Thank you very much. Okay, I think Paul has a question for you. Uh, just a quick one, I have two. The first one is, I, I noticed in your slides, uh, on the like, previous one, you, I, it says uh, data with the screen, so I assume you have some sort of versioning with the data on your platform. Uh, maybe you can share more on that. And then let's say if uh, someone wants to interact uh, with your data, let's say someone you've chosen already in the, in the, in the process itself, uh, when they interact and get access to the data, is it via, like, if you provide APIs, or is it something that they download via CSV, or is it something that they have a kernel running on your platform that uh, it can access, especially for big data, they cannot just download that or something? Uh, how, how are those working? Big questions, depends. I will start from there. Okay. So what we want to achieve in the end is uh, we want to build also data assets, right? So right now, uh, those use cases, use cases come with specific data assets. You can uh, request on the web page uh, a data sample, uh, we will send you some, some, just, uh, some couple of rows basically of the data to have the first look at, and you will receive the full documentation about the data. You will not receive the full data set. The full data set will be available to the startup that will work on the specific problem. Um, but what we want to do is, of course, collect those data assets over time on, the, on, our, data, uh, on our data hub. What means, like, if you uh, maybe are not chosen for the specific um, problem, but you say, okay, with this data, I could solve maybe a completely different problem that is not part of the use case, then please reach out to us. Uh, we will manage that you get access to the data. And this is the idea. We want to connect, basically, people. We want to connect also um, startups also to the right persons within the corporate. Because from our experiences, it can be quite hard. Like, if you don't know anybody in the corporate uh, world or in a specific corporate to put the data form, 
Um, it's really hard to open the door to, to gain trust to talk to the right person. Um, we want to take this up. We want to be their, uh, the mediator for you, like connecting you to the uh, chief innovation officer, whoever, who's in charge of the data, who can, can basically decide uh, which data is useful for you. Maybe there's even additional data that we haven't thought about. So we really want to be there, the mediator between both sides. Um, data, it, it depends, right? Um, so we receive a lot of data from a CSV format, uh, Excel format as well, if they are not so big. Uh, we have some um, 3D point data, uh, GIS data. Um, Format-wise, it really depends on the, on the use case and the kind of data. Um, you will always receive their um, documentation file with it that basically explains to you uh, what it is. We really want only to have data in standard formats, so not uh, something super fancy where you have to buy a specific software for 20,000 euros, it's not that. Okay. Any more questions? Anyone has questions for Felix? Okay. If not, I think we can end on today's session. Thank you very much, Felix.